people in my online class, today's big discussion question is, should the United States government have, have gotten rid of slavery altogether or do more to get rid of it prior to, or at least with the Missouri Compromise? So I'm gonna share my screen and take you to the article that you read for Monday's assignment about the Missouri Compromise. The Missouri Compromise, um, again, was an act of Congress that kind of split the difference on slavery. Slavery is going to become more and more of an issue. Um, there's a part of the article that I'm gonna to read to you because it brings up the concept of popular sovereignty, which is the idea without the slavery issue attached to it, the idea that people, when they move somewhere, they can create their own laws. If people want to change a law, then they can change it within where they're at. In, in the United States, there's plenty of different laws as you move throughout the different states. It's one of the concepts that our government is based on. So we get to the Missouri Compromise and it comes up again, but with the issue of slavery. So here it is. Though the Missouri Compromise managed to keep the peace for the moment, it failed to resolve the pressing question of slavery and its place in the nation's future. Southerners who opposed the Missouri Compromise did so because it set a precedent or an idea for Congress to make laws concerning slavery, while Northerners disliked the law because it meant slavery was expanded into new territory. So if you're a Southerner, you don't like the Missouri Compromise because that's the federal government telling you how to live your life. And one of the biggest concerns with Southern states as we move forward is the concept of states' rights. Um, the federal government, according to people who are really big into states' rights, uh, the federal government should do as little as possible to dictate how certain states act. Now, Northerners also disliked the Missouri Compromise because it allowed a slave state to enter into the Union. And if you go back to the original like constitutional convention, one of the outcomes there was um, they wanted to get rid of the slave trade by 1808. At least it would be discussed after 1808. So this issue of slavery is put off and put off and put off and put off and put off, which again leads to the Missouri Compromise, um, simply because you have to understand that there were people that relied on slavery. That's why for uh, like, a week and a half, two weeks, we just focused on the different eras or parts of the United States. You know, the Northern economy was based on industry. The Southern economy was based on slavery and agriculture. And those two got intertwined because the South would grow cotton that the North would then turn into products. It's just like this spinning circle that made slavery a bigger and bigger issue because there were people that absolutely did, didn't want it. And there were people that were absolutely reliant on it. And this led to a very specific issue here that we will actually get more into. But for right now, I want you to think about this concept, this popular sovereignty, which comes up again in 1854 during the organization of Kansas and Nebraska territories. Again, westward expansion. Senator Stephen Douglas of Illinois spearheaded the Kansas-Nebraska Act which mandated that the settlers of each territory should decide the issue of slavery for themselves, a principle known as popular sovereignty. The controversial law effectively repealed the Missouri Compromise by allowing slavery in the region north of the 36 degree parallel. Passage of the Kansas-Nebraska Act sparked violence between pro and anti-slavery settlers and leading Kansas, delaying Kansas's admission to the Union. Um, so there's a lot there. And the whole point of today's little discussion is just either a clips video or a short and sweet paragraph describing whether you think the United States should have done more uh, to end slavery. The only issue there is the issue of popular sovereignty. Uh, should people decide how and what laws should dictate their society that they live in? or should it be more directed by the central or federal government? It's an interesting question. I'm leaving it up, I'm leaving it up to you to answer um, in your own words, use your own thoughts. Why should 
popular sovereignty exists, why it shouldn't. And there's a lot of issues there that you, again, I'm just going to post this article again for you to use as essentially um, context for your answer. So with that being said, uh, I will be online uh, today. I guess you're going to be watching this on Tuesday. It's Monday afternoon right now. So I will see you then. Um, yeah, it's an interesting question whether the United States government should have done more to end slavery. So have a good one. See ya.